amazing because uh, Sarah asked me to talk on certainty and it is interesting. It was the correlation between um, wandering in this world and not knowing who you are and certainty is a very high correlation. The more willing you are to wander and not have a clue of who you are, where you are, what you are, what's happening, and you become more and more really clueless about everything. That's where your certainty uh, level goes higher and higher. <laughs> the more clueless you get, the more certain you get. It seems like a paradox <laughs> to the ego, because the ego says you can't be clueless and certain, but actually the, it's actually how it goes. And by it, and you know, just all kinds of things that seem to be beyond the traditional ways of, of moving through time and space. Just like that workbook lesson, I trust my brothers who are one with me, just, and then growing in the confidence of that. And so, you know, I think we're, we're kind of moving more kind of into a touring phase away from the, the centers, and, and I think that's part of the joy of it that it's a step more into confidence and certainty. So you don't necessarily know where you lay your head down. You don't necessarily know where your next meal is coming from. You don't necessarily have a clue. Like, you know, we'll go through the day with these collaborative meetings, but when you're out there in, in wandering in the world, you don't know who you're going to meet, what's going to happen, how long you'll be a place, and it's it would seem that that would bring in high levels of uncertainty and maybe even for the ego just like a fear of 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 just being purposeless but actually when you have your purpose firmly in your heart and you just kind of give it over to the spirit and say show me lead me then that's where it opens up all the all the adventures all the avenues just open up from there from not knowing from being that place of, of not knowing. And that's what I loved about, I, I mean I did the, the gatherings in Brazil and was put up in hotels and taken to see different sites and everything, but the best part for me was just these spontaneous heart-to-heart -heart gatherings where you could just feel it going deeper and deeper and deeper, this deep sense of love and intimacy and then these spontaneous things just unfolding out of that, in, in so much glee and joy, just the one thing to the next, to the next, to the next, and, and then I guess to come into that certainty, it's also letting go of, of the idea of what it means to be something to be working out or not working out, because I guess when we work on projects, there's still some kind of idea of how it will look if it works out and how it will look if it doesn't work out. And that can get frustrating too, uh, to kind of, you find yourself going in, it's like you're going down a route, road in a tunnel, and it's like you start to hit walls or dead ends or whatever, and it's like, well, what's happening here? And, and I think that's like a washing away of this idea that, that you actually still know what anything is for. Because even with the projects, you know, there's certain assumptions of that this is going to happen, this will happen, this is showing us that it's working. And it reminds me of the early days when I would sit down to write something or whatever and I'd get like through this whole thing, work for hours on something, and then something would happen and it would all get deleted. Mm -hmm. And it would just be like, what? Like, and, and I still had this sense like, you know, it was, it was a state of mind kind of mind training. It wasn't, it was showing me that it's not in the form, mm -hmm. you know. And it was undoing all senses of accomplishment and, and, <laughs> and everything. You know, when you get work so long on something and then something happens and it just completely is gone, then, you know, you have to just see the humor in it. And, mm -hmm. And, and have a laugh and, and start to get the lesson, you know, that there's really a lesson underneath it there. But it so goes against all of our conditioning, you know, that's just such a, it's like an accomplishment mentality. 
and in the end, the state of being is, you know, it from the world's perspective, it seems like an accomplishment, but from the experience of what is, you know, it's it's laughable. The whole idea of accomplishment is is even laughable. There's nothing. There's nothing that's ever been accomplished in a world that doesn't exist. You can't <laughs> actually have a real have a real accomplishment. You can't have a real resume. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't rest on your laurels because you you have no laurels. <laughs> <laughs> so that's that's always good. That's where it's all it's all heading. Yeah, so it's not about accomplishing or achieving something. That's that's probably why she was just that that she that she even had the question coming from like you know, what are you aiming towards really? But you're not really aiming. That's the fun of it. You get into the joy of it, then you want to talk about it and it's all exciting, but he says, What is it for? It's like, <laughs> yeah, like sometimes people will say, "What are you selling?" or you know, we're trying to get it at a motive, but yeah, there is no, there is no motive there. Searching for a ghost. Yeah, the title of the book, Unwind Your Mind, if you put that title along with this notion in the Course that everything, not some things or most things, but everything is backwards and upside down in this world, and you, then you start to get a hint. Unwind your mind and everything is backwards and upside down. So, so yeah, if you can start to open to that, then you can start to see that, he says, you can't judge your advances from your retreats. Meaning, really, you, you really can't judge success and failure in this world, and, and you never will be able to. I mean, the, once you come to the enlightened state, there are no successes and failures, and on the way there, everything's going to be backwards and upside down. So, it's comforting, actually. I, I mean, I found those things in the Course were very, very comforting. When I couldn't make sense of anything, and I would just be reminded of that, I'd be like, yeah. Because probably some of the happiest, most so joyful moments that I've had in my experience, where the tears just burst out, you know, were, were more like um, Lucille Ball episodes with Lucy and Ethel, you know, where they would get off in some adventure and then it would get more out of control and more out of control, and then it, that would be the funny moments of everything was out of control. and. That was the comedy, you know. I'm sure that just even the writers got a feel before they even got in there, and then when they got in there and they got into the skit, and they were acting it out. And I've had, I just had, you know, just yeah, like a lot of those kind of adventures, and and where I was just kind of in that state of of kind of expecting the unexpected or not realizing that it, it wasn't going to go a certain way, and knowing that, he heading into it. But that's kind of like, if you can have that attitude with, with everything, that nothing is as it seems, that everything's backwards and upside down, that you're just going to go through this, you'll get internal guidance and you'll be navigated, but you won't be able to know the destination, because if you already knew you wouldn't need the guidance, and so, and, and things are not going to go the way you think they're going to go. Things are going to go very different. You know, there's going to be a lot of twists and turns and lots of things that, are, you, that you're just not going to anticipate. And, and you may be tempted to, to judge them sometimes, mm -hmm. that something's gone wrong, something's gone off, something's gone bad. But in the end, you'll see that no, it hasn't. It never went, was off. Never took a wrong turn.
you never actually even made a mistake. You just thought you did, but you never, never made one wrong move at all, ever. Grace. <laughs> you're like, you're in the grace. And that's it. And that's truly the healing of relationships, because it's, yeah, that just totally wipes away any sense of wrongdoing or grievance. It's, it's the undoing of unworthiness, even talking to these two Chinese girls, because they, they each had this sense that the other was giving them so much more than they were giving. Susie was like, you just love me, and you offer me so much, and you help me out so much and everything, and I don't deserve it. And then the other one came on and said, you open my heart, you take me on travels, you open doors for me, and take me places I would never dare to go myself, and I don't deserve it. And I thought, and I said, yeah, I told him in the end, I said, that's just the way that it goes. Usually it's the one that we think is ourself is the last one to accept the love and the gratitude. We can, we can see it reflected even more in others than we can you know, seemingly in ourself, until the transfer goes all the way around. But I said, oh, that's so beautiful. You guys have such a great holy relationship. You're both, you're both givers and have a little trouble receiving. Or believing is more, believing that you're worthy to receive. That's the thing. That's the, that's the convincing that's happening. That we're so worthy. everything. Yeah, in the joining, it's like the doors open too, but it was like, again, in their joining, you know, whatever one needs, the other provides. It's the Spirit does it through these joinings, where it can seem to be a limit or an impossibility, then, then something comes in. Because mm -hmm. Emily said, oh, Susie just keeps talking about Utah, I want, you know, like people talk about going to Mecca or <laughs> something. I'm the, Utah, Utah, I want to go and live in Utah. I want to see what it's like to live in Utah. <laughs> and so she's over there wandering all over China, thinking of Utah, it's like her Shangri-La. <laughs> and then I'm here, you're all here in the Chemist Metaphysical Center, and I'm talking about wandering and not knowing who you are, where you are, what's coming next. You know, the, the glee of wandering. <laughs> Just, you know, not, not having an idea, not having a clue. Yeah. <laughs> That's the beauty of it. Yeah, it's fun. People just get fired up about some pathway or teaching and then they just want to give it away. They want to share it and extend it. Join together in some way. So that's really all we do. We just have opportunities, so many opportunities, every day. about, you know, it takes all the pressure off relationships. 
este I guess you were saying like it couldn't have been any different or you could, but the worthiness that part that just all felt so good I can't actually conceptualize the words you used but that felt so good I could feel the, like the clench of the unworthiness the trying for something still I could feel it start to release and go oh here's my way out like here's the relief. Yeah, it's like it's like a, a way like zooming in on the love and zooming in on the innocence and it's so different from the ego, just picking at everything, trying to pick apart things, but yeah, there's so many opportunities for that to yeah. The love is so strong and then it comes out in such a, a playful way. I feel that a lot with the touring and going out. It's just like everything just it's so warm and playful that it just kind of melts everything away and then people are just so drawn into that vibe they just feel the love they just want to just open up to it and come closer and closer and closer but yeah yeah it's just it's just so prior to time it just it doesn't it's the I amness it just can't recognize a mistake. It just has no recognition of a mistake or the p possibility or the potentiality of a mistake. I was flying back from Brazil and and I had my iPhone on shuffle and this song came on and I just started to feel the love just well up, and it's the song you might, some of you have heard it called "Hi," mm -hmm. and and then it got to that part of the lyrics when the tears just started to flow down my cheeks, and I'm just laying there meditating. But even the impossible is easy when we're together. You know that that line, even the impossible, because everything. You could say that that atonement or innocence from the worldly perspective seems to be impossible. In a world of sin, in a world that's generated out of error, where every nuance, every fabric of this dream is is projected error. That's why it's so depressing, that's why it seems like such a closed system, that's why it seems like there's no escape. That's why actually there's no awareness in the mainstream of, of, of it being a dream or of, of escape. So that's why there's so much focus on just a little bit of scraps of, of pleasure and scraps of good, good feelings because it's so dark mm -hmm. that the scraps are even emphasized. But even the impossible is easy when we're together. You know, it's, you know, it reminds me of that. With God, all things are possible, and that there's no, ain't no mountain high enough, and all those songs that just talk about really that how inevitable awakening is through this love, through this innocence. But without this love and innocence, it just seems bleak. It seems bleak and meaningless. I mean, in a dark sense. Dark and meaningless and, and empty in a very dark sense, not, not like the Buddhists talk about or we talk about an empty mind. So, to me that's, that's really what we're, we're just sinking back into that, yeah, that experience and, and feeling the gratitude of that. We're back to, you know, again, we're not trying to accomplish anything. It's not, 
not going for an accomplishment. We're not, we don't have that, like your mother was saying, what's it, for what, what is it for? We're not fishing for a reason. We're not fishing for something to make sense in the world. We're so willing to let go of yeah, whatever things mean. Just for that love, just to have a good taste of that, that true love. But I find from the Course, nothing you think or do or say or make can establish your worth. Your worth was established by God. It's so far beyond the things that we have associated with worth. It's like when a plane takes off, you know, it's got to accelerate quite a bit down a runway before it actually just softly, you just see the, the tires just lift up as it just takes off. It's such a soft lifting at the end, but there's this loud and kind of forceful acceleration. And so, yeah, that's what we, our path has been the path of devotion and through this collaborative devotion. but. But the liftoff is when you really see that it was nothing about any of the form. It's not even a collaboration between people. It just seems like that way when you're on the runway, that you're collaborating with your brothers and sisters. And, and you can even feel the momentum of the speed picking up as you're getting closer and closer to that beautiful point of light liftoff where you literally, where you leave the ground. But that liftoff point is where you see it's always been the Spirit, it's always been the Holy Spirit, and it's always, it's never been personal, and nothing that you ever seem to do, or not do, made no difference at all with, to the lift at the end of the runway. Because even with the idea of collaboration and team, you know, there's, there's still, there's still a tiny little, there's still personal aspects to it, little nuances, a little bit of pride injected in there with the persons, but not with the liftoff. It's almost like an ah, like ah. Oh. <laughs> That's where you get to. <laughs> yeah, I feel that. Then I, I, that's why I sit in the lookout from the airports and just watch the planes. Faster, faster, faster. Pop. Just go on, one after the next. Go on. Da, 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 da. So you go back, I will be there, I'm coming, da, da, da. but it's just like, mm -hmm. the, the day flows along, you don't have to like search it out or figure it out or 
make it happen or whatever. It's just, just being in presence, just being and letting what comes, come. And if something, if doors seem to open, you go through them. If doors close, you don't. <laughs> you don't. You, you can't. You just go, you know, that's, that door's not opening. <laughs> I'm not going through there. But you can, you know, you just, yeah. that's, that's just the way the day is going. You know, it's, yeah. I was talking to this woman right before I left Brazil, and she was, uh, she was concerned about what to pray for, and and what steps to take. She kept talking about some points where she felt she was stuck and what to pray for and everything. I said, well, you know, my prayer has always been, make it obvious. She said, make it obvious? Oh, that's great! <laughs> that covers everything! That's the only prayer I have to have for God. I don't have to figure any of this stuff out. Just make it obvious. and and. She said, do you put anything like, please make it out? <laughs> <laughs> you know, she wanted to make sure she got the exact word, because it's like, that's Imagine. the only prayer I need. That takes care of you from personal inspiration, whether you feel yeah. or don't feel something. Whether it's you like, feel or don't feel, that could be a, a thing. Yeah. Do I really feel it? Is it meant to happen? Is this the Holy Spirit of the ego? No, 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 blah, 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 blah. Make it obvious. <laughs> you know, and she, it's almost like slicing through like one of those ice cutter, you know, uh, ships up in the yeah. Arctic that just <laughs> got a whole mass of ice and just, <laughs> just cuts through the whole thing. Make it obvious, make it obvious. Kind of fun when you think about it, just to offer that prayer up to the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. make it obvious. And then just rest, go, mm -hmm. okay, there it is, I've, I've offered my prayer up, I've done my part, make it obvious, and now we'll see after there. Well, that, that was the first part I, it was actually I had to write all these gratitude letters. I kept hearing it for two days from all my trip and everything. Mm -hmm. and I was happy to go do things like buy the little orange thing with Zoo for the show or camp. But to write these gratitude letters, when I went to go do it, I was like, I don't know what it's for me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Some kind of like resistance to just sharing or using this body and saying, Jason, it was, but I got into it and I got so excited. I was like jumping around my room, but then I'm like, oh my God, you know, should I be doing this? Am I or whatever. And that's when that <laughs> movie thing, and then I, and it's, I kept going forward. So yeah. I came back and kept going. With yeah, that. yeah. That was your icebreaker. It was, <laughs> the movie, yeah. With the kids, with the little kids. Because, you know, like the force of coming down the road, it's like there's something that wants to come through. Yeah. There's this feeling, it just keeps coming and coming. And it's not, it's, it, it, whether doors are opening or closing, it's, I experienced this when I was in um, in Hawaii. You're swimming towards what looks like, which looks like a shelf of coral. It doesn't look like there's any way through, but you can feel that's the way you're going. You just keep going, going, and not until you're right there is it really obvious where the opening is, and you're straight through. But the stream is taking you. Your kick is taking you. Unknown <laughs> are taking you, and you're just going that way, and and you more and more feel like you're just along for the ride with this and just like the things that are, make it obvious like it keeps being in front of your face but that doesn't necessarily mean you experience it as feeling good or you understand anything of what it's for like right in front of my face and then there's this temptation to just cover your eyes like why you put, okay but what is this for because it keeps showing i have experiences that keep showing up right in front of me and I'm like i just, i really i don't get this but i am doing nothing to bring this if anything, I'm, I'm, I'm willing to like step back. Uh, I used all these step back thoughts in my mind, but it's like, I mean, it's blatant. So it's for me and why I really, I can't even really know why, actually. I don't feel I can know why. Just, this must be where it's just happening. It's yeah, it's just, I remember this teacher of the course, Tara saying, you know, because we're always talking about no expectation. His was his saying was always, the wise man expects things to be exactly as they are. Yeah. I was like, I would read all these books and I would get one thing that would stick with me. Like the wise man expects things to be exactly as they are. So that's that was beautiful. Like when I was in Brazil, I go to these new countries. I don't speak the language, and and even that, you know, oftentimes we're taken in and staying with out in people's houses. But okay, we're in a hotel. Like this, and then 
it, everything turns into a joke, though, because now in modern day, in the old hotels, you used to have keys. You get in, you unlock the key, you unlock the door with a key. That was back in the days when they had phone booths. Nowadays, I say phone booths in my stories, and people go, "What's a phone booth?" <laughs> I go, "Believe me, there was phone booths. There actually was. We actually had phone booths." But I said, "So I, so they give me the the magnetized." Card. So I go to my, I get there late, it's gone through all, we go through these big traffic jams in Sao Paulo, I finally, hours, hours later, after the long flights, I get there, they give you the magnetized key and you're ready to just, just go and lay down and you slide it in, and it's red. red. <laughs> and, and they put you up on the, I don't know what floor you're in, some <laughs> high rise, and it's like you've got your luggage and it's like red, red, red. <laughs> So I'm like, so I go down and so I meet some guy in the hall and he's like shaking his head. And I said, remember the days when we had keys? You know, we would just, you could actually stick a key in and, turn the <laughs> and get in there. He's laughing and I, he said, now it's all digital. So we go, so I go down and they do this. So yeah, that's the thing the whole time. I, it would be, I would never know. I would go up there. I go up there the second time, down, up there, and like, red, 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 green. Oh, <laughs> every single time, it was a whole new adventure with these magnetized things. And then they're like, did you put it next to your cell phone? No, I carefully kept it in the other pocket, everything. But it was just this thing with the, the keys. And and then um, I was telling him at the thing, because the one who was paying for it, he said, now this hotel, you get a breakfast with your hotel, room stay and everything. I said, okay, now keep that in mind. So then, I did ever had an appetite anyway, but one day I thought, I'm just going to go in and get a cup of tea or something. And so I looked and everybody was giving a little voucher. And I thought, that's kind of odd for a free thing. And then I went up, I said, go to the checkout. So I went over there and they said, Oh yeah, you have to pay for it. I said, you do? They said it was free. Oh no, you have to pay for it. So I was sharing that in the, the gathering. It's like every single thing, you just, it's like, oh, you accept whatever it is. Oh yeah, it's this way. It's, you don't have it, you, you end up, I didn't ever had anticipation that the magnetic, <laughs> that the door was actually going to open. You have to go up there and you just kind of, Look around the hall, and you're like, <laughs> but you don't. It's even something that simple right. as as putting a card in and having a, a door open. You don't even have at least the door is supposed to. No, be. you don't. You just go just like this, go. and then I go in. Red, okay. Red, red, okay. That's fine. Red, red, green. <laughs> and then I get in, you know. But it would be sometimes two, four, you know. It was just so. It was just perfect practice at. Now, let all things be exactly as they are. Let all things be. That's like the day you had today. That was just the one lesson. Let all things be exactly as they are. Don't try to figure it out. Let all, let all things be exactly as they are. It just keeps coming around. So just because you keep getting sent up in the elevator with a bag and with a seeming key code card, that doesn't, doesn't mean, mean anything. Doesn't mean anything. Nothing. Doesn't That's mean anything. just what you're doing. That's just what's happening. So it's irrelevant. It's just what the form is doing. Yeah, it's just irrelevant. Okay. Just what the form is doing. And you can't judge it. Mm -hmm. and I just keep thinking doors are supposed to open. And I can see how <laughs> I just screwed myself <laughs> over with that belief. Oh my God, we were, we were so great. Like, it's like, it's the tension is you just thought there was an outcome. And even as simple as all these setups, it looks like that's what, even this idea that, that healing is supposed to happen. Any idea, any thought that there's supposed to be release. Forgiveness, something, any thought like that becomes concretized in form is wrong. Mm. Torture, like. It's just you get so many opportunities. There's just oh, ways yeah. of <laughs> so many. When we finally got set up to do the talk, you know, they, they handheld mic, handheld mic. They gave me a shirt mic, and, and then getting it up, and then to get it to stay perky, pointed up this way. <laughs> And I would pull it up and it would loop down, loop down, <laughs> there, loop down, loop down, just like droop, 
It was a drooping. <laughs> <laughs> and they had a little safe, a little clip or something, a, 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 like a safety pin or something. A little thing, and I tried to do this and this, this. So then finally, okay, test, 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 test. But I would speak, it would be on, and it would go on and off and on and off. And one time it had done this during the thing, and they said the battery's out. So this time I'm getting ready to start the talk, and it's it's doing that thing on and on and off. The guy comes out and he says, "No, no, it's good. It's got a fresh battery. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good." It's good. It's good. He said, "No, no, it's good." <laughs> so we start the thing. And it's it's on and off for like ten minutes. I'm talking, you know, where it's magnified <laughs> and not magnified, and not magnified and not. Yeah, whoever's editing those films, they they may find that part in there, and then. Finally, I, but I just went along, this was talking, magnified, not magnified, not, and I said, man, I couldn't distract it. It's, mm -hmm. You can't expect that the microphone's going to stay on. <laughs> you can't expect these things. Mm -hmm. There's no point in even giving a thought. It's like, I'm just going to speak mm -hmm. as if it's, there is no microphone. And then, after ten minutes, the guy comes out and it's not working. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I said. <laughs> and so, they said, you need to use a handheld mic. Just put it to the floor. So I just set it there and just left it. But there's just little things. I got so deep into attack thoughts at one point, talking about how, how do you release attack thoughts. So I said, I said you have to realize that, that attack thoughts are any judgments that are positive or negative. Not just the negative ones, but the positive ones. The compliments are the same as the criticism. I saw people scratching their head, and one guy said, oh, such resistance when you start thinking about that. The positive <laughs> thoughts are the same as the negative thoughts. That's, oh, you know. So I said, yeah, it's like any compliment around form of the body. I said, yeah, you know, you've got nice hair. I like your hair. I don't like your hair. I like your shirt. I don't like your shirt. I like your pants. I don't like your pants. I started going this. There was a, a woman in there. It must have been in the course for like twenty some years. You know. And she just was just looking at me while I'm going way down into the positive thoughts are the same as the negative thoughts. And then at the very end of the gathering, she waits until the very end, after I've given talk for like 15 minutes on this topic, and she goes, I like your shirt. I said, okay, and that was the end of that. <laughs> All I did was, okay, that was, that's <laughs> I'm just here. Sharing a presence, and I'm trying to convince anybody, you know. And so then, after the gathering's over, people are milling around and everything, and I had shared in that example that, that you, you know, you get both sides. You have to see they're both the same, that's the whole lesson. And so, people were milling around, the gathering's over, somebody came up to me and talking to me and everything, and she goes, oh, and by the way, I don't like your shirt. I said, aha, there we are. There's the other, there's the dented beetle. You know, like, mm -hmm. there it is, coming around. You know, just wait, the like and the dislike, mm -hmm. positive and the negative. But it's the big distraction of the world, to go for the positive, mm -hmm. seek the positive and avoid the negative. Mm -hmm. Every day, seek, seek, seek more of the positive, avoid, avoid the negative. Not seeing that they're both the same. Mm -hmm. Again, another day. Holy Spirit said, let's try this again. Here's the lesson. Uh, seek the positive, avoid the negative. And, and that, that still has to do with trying to think you know what's going on, that you can figure... You know what's positive. You know what's positive, that you can figure anything out. There some should people, be difference. Yeah, some See, people say, oh, here's so and so, we've been married for 50 years. <laughs> <laughs> and then one person goes, Another person goes, mm. <laughs> because it's, mm. is that a good or a bad thing? That's why you don't know. And you'll never know, because <laughs> it's, it's not understandable. But nothing of this world really is specific stuff. And yeah, everything just, everything just completely taken care of, but it's like, yeah, just to be a leaf in the river. That's, that's all we're, you know, make it obvious and just 
to be a leaf in the river where you just have not a clue. And yeah, so it, 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 that's great. It's great heading towards an airport, not having a clue whether you'll be on the plane or not. Or yeah, but it's just with every single thing, you just have to stay in that. We always talk about Chauncey Gardner or Magoo. To stay in the Magoo mind. That's really, that's more the advanced mind training. It's just to be totally in Magoo. Be 100% Magoo. Then you're, you're totally invulnerable to an expectation. You're really invulnerable to the script because you're, you're right in simultaneity when you're in that absolute cluelessness with everything. It's an empty mind. The Buddha's talk about it. It's, you, don't, you don't have a clue what's coming yeah, or care, really. I just felt so much love too. I just felt there was so much love and care in that being carried. Yeah. It was a, it's a beautiful symbol, a beautiful reminder of that, how, how cared for we are when we're in that place of just total surrender, total, total surrender. I think that's been helpful, that symbol of travel for me to go to these countries where I don't speak the languages and don't understand things. And it's almost like that's like an invitation to me, like, oh, you really don't know what's going on here. Just, just come even deeper into that trust. Yeah, not. Not having a plan. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, it's almost like sometimes maybe as a little child when you get a little whiff of this world and you see all these adults, big adults around and everything, they're all moving around, they seem to have such important things to do and they all get all dressed up and they do all these crazy things and you're just looking and just going, God, my God, like, this is a mess. I got myself into, and you're just a kid, you know, you're just a tiny little body, and you're looking at all the, and you think, I can't even imagine getting into whatever that is, and yet all your messages as you move forward from there are, you have to get into mm -hmm. to that, and part of you is just going like, that is not appealing at all, it was pretty strong in me. Education, school was not appealing, and, you know, I mean, just the rules of the family, it just was like, strange, weird place, and you don't do that. And then you're supposed to kind of get into that as if that's normal, and as if you can actually fit into it. And then, once you, I mean, the message is just hammer it, just hammer, 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 day in, day out, you know, and you seem to have no other option, nobody's showing up saying, ah, it's just a dream, <laughs> don't give it a thought, you know. And then you, you finally start to get into it, and then you finally start getting to this thing where you think, oh God, I'm, something's adjusting or adapting here, you finally start to take on personal responsibility. Mm. Now you've been tricked into being a person, tricked into survival, tricked into do the right thing tricked into pleasing people, tricked into having future goals, tricked into having ambition, tricked into the whole lie, and then, and being told, now you're adjusting, now you're, it's good. <laughs> You've just bought this big lie, and now the messages are getting hammered at you, that's good, that's good, that's good, you're adjusting. Good, 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 normal, developing, Progressing human being responsible. It's good. You're responsible. That's good. So you, you're hammered. That personal responsibility is good. And then at some point, now you've got to now shift back to that little childlike 
thing. It wasn't buying it in the first place, but it's been so ingrained, hammered in, it's got to be personally responsible, personally responsible, personally responsible. So when I meet people, they, they will open up their hearts and they will just say, well, I'm, I'd be home free and happy as you are, except for this, mm -hmm. this, 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 and those. They just speak their tethers, they speak their chains, you know, they come right up and they speak them out. And, I don't know, there's just something in me that just wants to just pour out to them and just go, no, those things cannot hold you back at all. And, and then all these kind of symbols and metaphors of, no, it's not the prison that you think you're in is not really what you think it is, and, and just almost like stepping stone ideas that they can start to begin to go, whoa. Because they don't really see a way out. They're so, in, they're so just circumscribed by these false responsibility, personal responsibility ideas that they don't think there's actually hope of an escape from them. You know, they're just trying to figure a way to try to have a little more wiggle room, but they don't even actually believe they can get out of the chains. But that's, yeah, so for me it's like just being with them, being with them, being with them. And I mean, one says, you know, like, I, I have a child, and da 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 and I said, I remember what Hillary, Hillary Clinton said, it takes a village. It takes a village. So maybe you'll have symbols of other caregivers coming in that you, you know, you don't have to even personally feel responsible for raising that child, or it's the weight the personal responsibility with whatever this, the job seems to be, or the children, or the, whatever the, the tethers seem to be. It's like, you no. Know. So it turns into, it's that seemingly being thrust against the rocks is, is like now you're like unwinding from that heavy, heavy hammering, heavy conditioning that's so reinforced, you know, that you have to do something even to get out of it. And that's not even true. Ultimately, you don't really have to do anything. It just seems to, to play itself out. But it's more of just, yeah, every time you get thrust against the rocks, it's more just like taking a step back and saying, what is it? What is it that I'm still clinging to or holding to or identifying with? It's really the, that takes you right to the core of the tether. What is it that I'm really still identifying with? What thought? Like you can't be the thinker of those thoughts or the doer of those actions. It's absolutely impossible. But the convincing job is just it's just been so strong now it's it's going the other way. Feels like almost a willingness to, to shout help instead of trying to avoid the rocks instead of trying to do, shouting help just calling it beyond this this anything of the known and just like allow it like a rushing in to just that would be what I don't do that would be the, that would be the difference is throwing it completely open there's mm -hmm. always a there's some sense of handling, always. Yeah, yeah, there's a heavy conditioning with the independence and autonomy that's like the first kind of reaction to, to handle it on one's own. It's, that's supposed to be this great thing mm -hmm. that you finally achieve and mature and that you can handle the world on the world's terms. Really, it's nothing. You, you know, actually, you know, it's hell, but it's, it's talked about as if it's heaven. And then the ones that seem to be successful in the world, successful, skilled, confident, they've got it all together, you know, this and this, twice removed from reality, not even close to reality. And those are the successful ones. And there's chinks in the armor, there's cracks, there's 
as controlled and manicured and everything as it is, why there's some major chinks in that armor. And then it's, it's yeah, it's never pretty when, when that starts to crack and fall apart. It's never, never pretty. Such a watching, you just have to stay and not knowing. I hopped into a cab uh, on the way to the mountain climb, and, and um, again, it's all going on in Portuguese. This sharp, I can feel this sharp uh, conversation back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth, and back and forth. It's like a Chinese ping pong game. <laughs> and the cab is a movie. This is like. This is all interaction inside the cab and everything. And then, um, so I just watched, 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 wait, wait, to go again, but I'm the leaf. I've just got a part of the, the screen that's not moving, so I'm just bobbling there. <laughs> and all this Portuguese is going on, the cab's not moving, we're in a cab. But who says cabs are supposed to move when you get in them? Right? <laughs> so that's for sure. So I'm in the cab, and it's all that's going on. The cab is not moving. And, and the, guy, the cab driver is really firm, and the woman I'm with is really firm, and they're going in. And then um, finally, after like two minutes of this, so I'm just waiting, it's moving in. <coughs> then she looks up at me and she says, she opens the door. We're getting out of the cab. <coughs> and then she explains to me that the cab driver, we're going up to this high mountain, and the cab driver is insecure about taking his cab up away from the city, up, up that high in the mountains. And she said, so, she said it was good, it was a good exchange, she <laughs> said, because she said he, he was forthright and he, she was very glad that he was transparent about his insecurities. And, you know, that we wouldn't want to be going up on a cab with somebody that didn't really want to be going there. But she was also asking me, so she said, so it's, it's, we don't, we just accept it, right? We don't push. <laughs> I said, yeah, that's exactly, exactly it, because that was the, that was the thing, and it happened, yeah, it happened again. It seems like there was a series of those events, and and she was like looking like, what's the lesson in this? And I said, yeah, we don't push. We don't push. No matter what, we don't push. And we can afford not to push in this, this state of being. She's like, yeah, I like this. But still, it was, there was no mincing of, you know, it was back and forth. It was, it was almost like an exposure of, of insecurities and so forth that had to take place, but it still was not affecting, you know, anything that would seem to transpire. Yeah, that's the fun of it all.
investing not in the now. Yeah. <laughs> It also comes back to this, it's, it's so subtle because it's always around time, like I've had people that go to Mexico and they, they go, whoa, the perception of time is so different in Mexico, and then they'll say, yeah, and be, you know, when somebody tells you mañana, mañana, they don't mean tomorrow, they mean not now. That's all mañana means is not now, which is great. Um, because the Bible said, let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. So if somebody asks somebody for, can you do a service for me, can you do this, can you do, can you promise me something around the future, the Bible, Jesus says, let your yay be yay, let your nay be nay. But we're not supposed to promise, make promises for the future, really. Because it's a trick. It really isn't there. <laughs> we're promising something that is a hypothetical. So it's not even there. So, I like that. Manana manana means not now. It's it's no. If you ask somebody, can you do this for me, and they go manana manana, it means no. <laughs> it's very simply no, which is good. I like that. They're being direct, but that's their language. If you interpret it mean tomorrow, you're in trouble. <laughs> then it's hell. If you think there is a tomorrow, then it's hell. But and you, th you think you've made a promise. Now if somebody has to keep their word on it, then it's hell. You know, it's, help is on the way, I think Byron Katie one time they said, help is on the way is hell, and <laughs> no one's coming is heaven. No one's coming <laughs> is heaven. <laughs> That's it. That. Help is on the way is hell, and no one's coming is heaven. You see how different that is from the ego's interpretation. Help is on the way in the future, it's like, good, good. Yeah. And no one's coming. Oh, we're screwed. But it's actually everything in the world is backwards and upside down. <laughs> it's deep, but it's all makes sense from a, you see, it's all backwards. You're going to face abandonment because they're a good couple of lives. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no one's coming. Okay. <laughs> you get over it pretty quick. <laughs> no one's coming. No one's coming. I went over to the Canary Islands to visit my friend Susanna Ortiz one time and she kept telling me before I went, she said, oh, there's a couple that wants you to marry them over here on the island. And so when I got there, she said, oh, come, let's do some talks with David. So we were talking, talking. Apparently the night before the wedding I was giving a whole talk on the present moment. Love is present. It's all, all it is, is love is right now. And I didn't know it, but the bride and the groom were in the audience. So I give my whole talk on, it's just present, it's present, it's present, and I could say, yeah, if you ever get married, I didn't even know that I'm married, <laughs> and I don't even know that I'm marrying, who I'm marrying the next day. It's always blind. But, so, I said, if you ever get married, the best vow, really the only vow you want to take, if you want to really be in the truth and be aligned with truth, is I love you now. That's the vow you can make. So sure enough, we get the next day, and the bride's all dressed up, and the groom, they come out, and they said, have you prepared your vows? He said, they're both, don't speak any English, but I had the translator there. They said, yes, we have one vow. We were at your talk last <laughs> night, and I love you now. That's, they've got, so they exchanged the vow, the vow, I love you now. And I said, yeah, you know, it's, if you really don't understand what this means, you know that you have no future together. Like, yeah, yeah. It just flips everything around, but in the most striking ways, where like with a marriage, if people, the bride will sometimes will say, I spent my whole life dreaming and visualizing one day, and then the pressure <laughs> is enormous on that day spend years and years visualizing how everything's got to be and how it's got to look. They make movies, they make comedies out of that day going, I mean, I, I, there's so many good ones, but I, I do like uh, Time Traveler's Wife because the groom <laughs> <laughs> could literally, he dissolves away and then the, the best man's trying to make excuses, you know, and then he comes in the door, but he's from a difference. So he's got a little bit of gray, and the, when he goes down the aisle, the, the father of the bride just looks 
this was like, did you see the gray hair? <laughs> but that's really playing. They have, and then on the wedding night, that's got to be your all time no expectations thing there on the wedding night. They're bouncing up and down prior to having sex, their first <laughs> on the wedding night, just, just after getting married. And she's laying there waiting for him and, and she's just so happy. She closes her eyes and, and just his clothes come down on her. No body on the wedding night. <laughs> I thought, that's a good movie. <laughs> that movie. It's more than expecting sex on the wedding night, expecting a body <laughs> in the bed with you on the wedding night, or a body at all in the room with you. It's, no. <laughs> Go on into thin air. That's a, that was a good movie for, for laying aside expectations. You want the fast track, marry a time traveler. <laughs> you never know whether they're there or not. They're gone. When they'll be around. I did. I made a community. She didn't say anything. <laughs> she didn't say anything. It was awesome. That was perfect, though. That was on the wedding day. It rained and stopped and rained and stopped and rained and stopped and rained and stopped, and, rained and, stopped and nobody knew what would happen or because we were going to do it down on the point, but not in the rain. But then it was rained and stopped. So we just were trusting and going through the whole day. That's so great too because you drove down the, the point here to the parking lot and I was getting a little like, geez, what is going to happen here? I don't know what. And you got out of the car and you just gave me a big smile and said, yeah, it's a moment to moment thing, I guess. You know, it just kind of calmed me right down. Yeah. It was nice. <laughs> <coughs> Was you could feel all the letting go of expectations yeah. right there on the wedding day. Yeah. It's funny, the things that seem so important in this world, you know, then you start to get this deeper context like, oh, it's still the same lesson of like being a leaf in the river. It doesn't matter what it is. Yeah. Marriage, graduation, yeah. birthdays, or so-called big events. Sacred you know, days. Sacred days. 2012, polar alignments, Mercury in retrograde. <laughs> Here all the time, yeah. yeah. I get ding, my cell phone goes off this afternoon. It's, it's a it's a message from a Hawaii credit union flashing, the hurricane has passed. 